Hello everyone, we have some new video to video update technique using the one 2.1 AI video model and now this one is going to be more stable in terms of performance and also the coherent styles you get from your reference editing like the examples I'm showing here. A few examples did pretty good and some are average but so far this new video to video method is getting better and is able to use images as references for restyling whichever frames you reference for editing your existing videos. Like this one, I like the Assassin's Creed example. It's doing really good on the part of the character walking in the same direction and also getting my reference character as the restyled frames. It's able to do pretty nice on this one. Now we're going to check out the method. We have the Hanyuan Loom. This is a custom node that's used for the flow edit video to video editing method in Comfy UI. We have a new update in this node. I've talked about this node before, how to run it in Comfy UI, set it up with the Hanyuan videos, as you can check out these examples or the tutorials in this video that I've mentioned. Right now, we're going to update the latest batch of this custom node, and the flow edit is basically in the research paper here. I'll also reference this in the video description. This is for text-based editing, but then we're going to use even more referencing in the WAN 2.1 AI models, collaborating with the Hanyuan Loom, which this new update custom node supports WAN 2.1 as well. With WAN 2.1, we're able to use images and references like these examples that I'm showing. We have the workflows of how I did it last weekend, and I played around a few times with that post in the YouTube Shorts, showing some examples before this video post. Basically, we're going to load your source videos, of course capture the first frames, and use those first frames as the source video frames. Now this one, most people will be using ink painting as that's the most basic thing to do. You have the flux in paint, like for example, I did this one, I talked about that before. Using the flux fill in painting and basically just text prompting what kind of elements you want within this mask to edit and in paint. I've seen the man walking across the traffic light using the same first frames in my source videos here. And in this previous example that I just did, it's a senior woman walking across the traffic light with the same motions. We have the examples showing like this. Of course, this is not high resolution, so you're going to see it kind of blurry. But when you click into the full preview here, you'll see a pretty clear, more clear way of seeing all these motions going on with the senior woman across the traffic light on the street. These motions are also captured from the source videos where I have the young lady walking across the street like this. Now, this is going to load the image and we're editing the load image for restyling the first frames for WAN 2.1 and even the Hanyuan video image to video model weights. We're able to load the editing video, which means the target videos here. We're going to use that for our next steps, which is doing the conditioning. Now, in WAN 2.1, we're going to load the image to video node. This is dedicated for use with the WAN 2.1 AI video model, where we have the start image loaded in and I have created all the input parameters synchronized with our source videos. The width, height, and length are going to synchronize all the settings with our initial settings in the video loader group. So in the loader group, we've passed all these values and all the input parameters are going to be synchronized across the workflow. Now, for one 2.1, we have this method to create the video's conditioning where we have the positive and negative prompts. We have the vision encode for capturing the first frames of the image where on the top here, we're going to work on the source videos. And on the bottom part here, we also have a pair of text prompts for positive and negative, as well as a set of clip vision encodes for getting our video's target image, which I've referenced as the edit image in what I've input here. So as I've put the note here, put your restyle first image here in this load image. Then we're good to go with the video prep for the target image. This part is just putting the first image of the source videos and also the edit image that I input into the load image nodes created with the same dimensions for both videos. This just makes it easier for the processing to move on to the next steps for sampling in this workflow. And that's why I've created one more step here to have both images passed again after resizing. 
after getting the dimensions synchronized for the video source image and the video target image for the one image to videos custom node here. So after we create all the conditioning, we pass it to the flow edit, which is this one, the Hanyuan Loom. The custom node here is going to set the guider for the upcoming generations of our video to video creations, where we have the source video conditions, positive and negative, and also the target conditions as well. The source CFG and the target CFG are better to have customizable. You can set more CFG depending on how you want the settings. Sometimes you might want to set a higher CFG as well. If you wanted to follow your prompts more closely and if there's going to be a lot of change between the source videos and your target image styles, if there's a lot of difference, then you'll have to set these CFG numbers up. So the next step is going to be sampling. This will be passing the Han Yuan Loom or the Flow Edit Sampler as well as the Guider. We need that too as it's one of the core things to do the video editing for the V to V. We have the skip steps and drift steps. I've explained that before in previous videos as well as here. I've put the notes on how that's operating and that's referencing the Han Yuan Loom custom node page. Here, you've got the settings and it explains how to use it. It should be pretty easy to do, just do your math, very simple math, to calculate how many steps and you put how many skip steps for less influence or more steps for higher influence in your video editing. Now, after finishing everything with this sampler's custom processing, we pass the VAE decode and we have our samples here. Now, as I know, after the Comfy UI latest update, I've seen the video combined output is kind of weird. You'll see some blurry-ish output here, but when you right click and use the open preview, it's back to normal. The resolutions aren't as blurry as what you see here. I'm not sure if that's a little bug or what, but as you can see in the output full size that I'm showing in another tab in the web browser, it's looking normal. Um, if you want to determine whether this is a good output or not, maybe you'll want to bring that to another new tab to do a full size preview. That would be a more ideal and better way to do that. And that's what I've experienced after the update of this Comfy UI latest version. So this is pretty easy to operate just using the Hanyuan Loom with the Flow Edit. And we have the WAN 2.1 as I've loaded here. I just forgot to mention the model loader groups. It's very easy and self-explanatory. You have the safe tensors files. If you prefer running with the GGUF quantization method, you can do that as well. And if you have lower VRAM and want to use GGUF, that's also workable. Just connect the model to the TCache receive endpoint here. Now, talking about the TCache, you need to update the, the Comfy UI TCache custom nodes in order to run 1.2.1. There are some new updates where the Hanyuan videos also work for the image to video model right now. And the one 2.1, a few text to video and image to video model weights from one 2.1 are also in the drop down list menu here. So choose the right one that corresponds to your selected models and you're good to go. Also the LoRa loader here, I just put that in case. This is optional. If you have a one 2.1 LoRa, you can load this one. The most basic thing you can do is connect the LoRa output to the TCache and of course connect the model to the LoRa loader like this. Then you have a complete pipeline, a chain of pipelines here and pass the XY reverse model prep. This is from the Hanyuan Loom and send it out to the next group for the model's data. And that's a very clear workflow style here, as you can see. You should be able to handle it very easily. Connect whichever things you want to. Let's say I don't have a LoRa loader or any LoRa models here, then you can just bypass this and connect directly. If I have low VRAM, I can just connect the GGUF quantized models to the TCache and you're ready to run this. So, this is a very basic model structure of the workflow to connect and so far what I've seen is that it's very beginner friendly. I've also done something more advanced for this workflow where we can automate the video editing for these restyle frames as well. But first, we're going to try this one and run it one time. Let's say I've got 49 frames in this example. This is two seconds of the young woman walking across the street with some traffic lights in the background. We're using this motion. And this time, we're not using the senior lady. Instead, we have another image that I just added. 
This scenery of a man walking across the street like this. Then, we're going to use this one and the prompt conditioning here. We have to change that. So, let's say I'm going to use the same prompts here because this is where I've described the scenery man, how he looks, his outfit, etc. in these in-paint text prompts. And then, I bring it here, where we have the conditions for the flow edit and I've described what it looks like here. At the top part, which is the source videos, you don't need to edit that if it's the same video, of course, so let's run it one time and see how that looks. Okay, so we've got the generated result here, and as you can see, this time it looks okay. It has the same motions as the reference video, where the person character is walking across the traffic light. There's also more detail, as you can see, when the generated videos come from here, more cars are driving across the street on the opposite side. And also here you'll see some cars are actually moving in the last few seconds, compared to what we have in the source videos, where the background is more steady. So, some creativity is going to be added, even if you haven't prompted it in the text prompts or done any specific creations. This all depends on the CFG. If you set it higher, there will be more creative elements added to your generated videos. But so far, this one looks nice in terms of how it walks and captures the walking cadence of the senior man walking on the street. It's pretty normal movement here. Then I've created another two versions of the one 2.1 flow edit video to video method, where, as I mentioned, I'm using the front part of the first frame restyle frames editing within the workflow as well. And this one, I'm using the Flux ACE. I've mentioned Flux ACE before. Uh, I'll be linking this one in the video description as well, right here. And then we also have another one, which is a simpler method using the Flux Redux in Paint. Well, this one is going to be less coherent in terms of character positions or if you want to change items, but the styles are still able to transfer using the Redux. Here, I've put two segment anything masks, one for using the first frames of the source videos, and the second for using another reference image for restyling the first frames. Here, I pass those two images and masks into the processing samplers group, where I've used the Redux Advance, just like what I've shown before to do the Flux Redux. Those concepts are brought into these examples here, where I have two Flux Reduxes. One is getting the mask, and the other one where I've put the redux for the aspect ratios of the person, character, or any objects you want to restyle. And then, the mask is going to only capture the items within that reference image. Then, we're going to use the in-paint model conditioning, where we'll work on the source video's first frames, as we have the mask of those first frames. And then, we're going to bring that out, just like what we've seen here. The image that I'm showing is basically the same concept. But for this senior man image, I was just using in painting without the redux. So it's all using the text prompts. So what's the difference between these two when you're using them? Now I'll show that using the same video source and you'll see how that looks. I'll also set it for 49 frames here, just for a two second demo, and we'll see how that turns out. As you can see here, I have the Flux Ace Plus Flow Edit Workflow. And next, I'll generate the Flux Redux in Paint workflow, where I'm going to use a few different styles. Right now, it's generating the Flux ACE, where I'm using another way of restyling the first image frames. Now, the Flux Ace here is more accurate in transferring the reference image. For example, I have this video game character from Assassin's Creed, and I bring that into the mask area. This is going to be better in terms of presentation and the positioning of the character is going to be more accurate than with the Flux Redux. Now, I'll be doing two examples using the same character here, and then you'll see the side-by-side -side comparison. And here's the example generated using the Flux Redux in Paint. We have masks for both the source image from the videos and the reference image. We chop the background, remove it, and then we have the Flux Redux working on this style of the first frames. We got the Assassin's Creed character blended into the in-paint area, and then we use that for the image in the flow edit videos, where you use this image for the video's target conditions. Then we got the final result generated,
but once you bring it into another tab, you're able to see a clear picture of how it looks. So, so far this looks okay, pretty stable on everything. But then, except for the pants, the lower part of the body of the character doesn't stay true to the referencing from what I have in the text prompts. That's because the half body shot of the image is just like that. And if you want full styles for the character, then you should add more detail in the text prompts, which is here. You're able to create the target conditioning, get more detailed text prompts, and bring that into the video results. And the other style that we have is using the Flux Ace Plus which is another way of editing the first image frames as the image and passing that for our video editing using the Flux Ace Plus. Where I've talked about how to use the Flux Ace LoRa, we've got three types of LoRa, and therefore I've connected those in this workflow as well. Using that for what we have in creating the canvas, doing the in-paint with the in-context LoRa, which is the Flux Ace Plus, and then we generate the image here. Lastly. We'll bring that to the same workflows for video to video here. And this time, we're going to use the GGUF quantization and try to see if we're able to run that with the GGUF models as well. So let's run this and we'll see how that looks. It'll be the same image, this character, also going to be edited in the first image frames of the source videos. We'll animate that in the video output for the edit in the flow edit as well. Okay, so we've got the generated result here. As you can see, for the one 2.1 with Flux Ace, we can create more details of the character in this in-paint image, where it's able to fully transform the details of the characters, or what they call the subject Laura. Using that, we bring this character to the in-paint image, and then we use this image as the base for the style transfer, and use that for animating the videos here, where we have the same motions going on as the source videos. And as you can see in the full preview, the full page preview here, this is the Flux Redux with InPaint. The difference is that with the Flux Ace Plus, as you can see right here, we get more detail even for the Flux Ace to do the style transfer of the character. And also, because of having more detail for the base first frames image, we have even smoother detail in the animations for the video to video here. Yeah, so it's up to you whichever method you use, but I'd prefer the Flux Ace Plus for the first initial frames restyle when using it for video to video here. Both GGUF and the original FP8 models work well in the flow edit method. So that's it for this video. And I hope this inspires you guys, whichever method you use for the video to video method using WAN 2.1. I'll see you guys in the next video and have a nice day. See ya.